everybody. Happy Sunday. So we're going to work on, we're going to work on the, uh, the second half of the gather together pillow tonight. This is the multi hoop section. So, um, it's, it's going to take a little while. So, um, we'll, I'm going to definitely do the first half and then we'll hoop it the second time. And then you can let me know if you want me to continue or if you, if we'll talk about all the colors and everything, but if you don't need to watch me, sew all of it, um, the, each part takes a little while. So, um, but thank you so much for joining me tonight. And I just wanted to thank you all. You've been all so kind with the thoughts and prayers and the condolences for my, because uh, the death of my father. And I just wanted to thank you all very, very much. You're my family. And I just really enjoy, I enjoyed reading everybody's um, thoughts, prayers, and condolences. So thank you so much. Um, oh, thank you, Nancy. <laughs> So anyway, we're we're going to have some fun embroidering tonight. I just needed to do some normal things. Um, I just wanted to let you know, too, that on Tuesday I'll be back to work. So I just need to start doing my normal things. And then um, while this is sewing, we'll talk a little bit about what's going to happen for the next couple of weeks and then the November class. Okay, so I'm going to have to... I have to get myself home. That's the other thing is I need to get myself home. So I'm going to have a little bit of a break so I can move. So anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that here, here in a few minutes. Um, so we're going to work on gather together. This, this has been a really fun project. It is rather challenging. I'm going to, you know, this was a little bit of a challenge and hopefully tonight, um, <laughs> hopefully tonight, I don't have the problem I had with the first one. So I'll talk about that as we go here. Um, I did have a little problem with the first one. And if it happens again, I'll show you how I fixed it. Okay. So I'm going to turn the camera over here and we're going to get started. So we'll talk a little bit while it's sewing because it takes a little bit for some of the sewing to happen. So, all right, let me get the camera turned down here. And I'm going to turn the banner off. Do that first get the camera set get back to my comments just a second here i always have all these buttons to push and get my microphone okay all right all right so thanks everybody i'm glad everybody and everybody came to visit me tonight so this is a really cool project so i i've actually really really enjoyed doing this and it was it was challenging. I think it's a challenging um, uh, project, especially, you know, we've done it in lots of steps. Um, so tonight, what we're going to work on, let me get this book out of the way, we're going to start, we're gonna, we need to mark the second portion of the center part, the longer part, first. And, you know, we did the wreath. Um, I did the wreath by video last week. And then this is going to be the gather together section, which has to be hooped twice if you're using the um, the nine by 14 hoop. So I'm using a nine by 14. If you're going to do it in a six by 10, I think you might have to hoop it possibly four times, but I'm not sure. I have I didn't look at the instructions real close. It's done the same way as this. You just have to mark more marks and hoop it more times. Okay, so it's no big deal. It's just done. It's it, you just have to hoop it more times. Okay, so what it says here on page five in the instructions about the marking is you have to mark the center, horizontal center, and the vertical center. So I took my heat heat away. Okay. Oh, I know. Isn't the braid border pretty? I actually kept the one that I did. I finished it because I thought, you know, I might actually make another one of these because it turned out prettier than I thought. <laughs> so I really like the braid border too. All right. Okay. So what I did is I marked the, the horizontal all the way across the horizontal um, middle, the horizontal center and the vertical center. So that's the first thing it tells you to do. Okay. And I just did that with my ruler and my heat, my heat away marking pen. Get my little bit smaller ruler here, just a second. And then we need to make a couple of markings because we're gonna we need something to hoop to. So it shows you in this drawing down here. 
just trying to find my shorter ruler so it's easier to show you. There we go. Um, it says from the left of the vertical center, which is here. Okay, so here's my vertical center. Okay, it says to the left of the vertical center, you want to mark, make a mark at three and three quarters inches from the center. So I just took my little ruler and marked three and three quarters inches from the center and made another line right here. Okay, so that's gonna be the hooping that we're gonna do first is the one over here. And then it says to take to the right of the center, draw a vertical line right five and a quarter inches from the center. So then I'm gonna, so then I took my ruler and I marked five and a quarter inches over here and made a line. So these are gonna be our centering marks for the first half and the second half of gather together. So the gather is gonna be over here and then part of together and then the rest of it and the pumpkin will be over here, okay? So it's pretty straightforward what it tells you to do here. And the, and the picture is very good. So this is on the bottom of page five in the instructions for the nine by 14. And then on the next page, it's going to tell us what to what to choose. So we're going to choose part number two of the gather together. And it's going to say gather and then part of together is what we're going to do first. OK, and we're going to and we're going to use this mark that we marked to the left of the center as our center marking. OK, so let me get that. Sorry, I've got a fly bothering me here if I'm and I've got, you know, remember our pieces of fabric we cut for the, all the pieces. Here's my little piece of paper for part two. And then I've got, you know, I know what I have to do for the colors. So my gather is this dark brown. And then I've got my other letters that I have to use in this section. Um, I got that um, listed here. So I remember which colors I was using. OK. So what I'm going to do then is we're going to hoop this. Now I am going to use my my um, snap hoop like I did in the last video. So I'm going to turn this. So if you see here on the, machine, on the machine, it is, this is the top right here. So the top needs to be to the left. So make sure you're hooping this the proper direction, okay? So the left, the gather is up on the top left of the screen, and I want gather to be right, oops, let me turn the camera a little bit, want gather to be right up here. So this is going to be the right orientation. So your reef is going to be down, okay, like in your lap, okay? And then I'm going to use my snap hoop so i'm going to kind of take make sure i've got it i've got it chosen and i'm going to kind of take my my uh, pillow top here and i'm going to you know kind of center it on that that center line that we marked here this is the vertical center but then remember we moved it over three and three quarters inches so i'm going to make that i'm going to kind of center my needle on that so i can put my hoop on And get this in here and I'm going to try to get it in here you know as straight as I possibly can and as centered as I can okay so I try to get try to do the best I can because the um if you get it a little bit too off, sometimes it's hard for the little snowman to center it. Now I centered my snowman. Um, I'm going to use my snowman and lots of you have the snowman in the machines. And if you don't, then you need to take your regular hoop and hoop this and then, you know, put your little plastic grid in there, just like I showed you in the last video. And it's going to be done the same way. So eat whichever way works for you. I like to use these magnetic hoops when I'm doing this kind of stuff because I think it's easier. And um I'm just, you got to make sure your hoop's good and centered and that it's all even on the edges. Okay. I'm just, that's what I'm working on here. I think that's what happened to me when I was doing the last one. Cause I think my camera arm, it came back and hit my camera arm and then my, my design got off. So I had to fix it with the, with the projector. 
and um, I'll show you if, if that happens again, we'll just fix it. You know, sometimes things happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my my uh, snowman and I'm going to put it on. You don't need to make those lines a little longer. Second. So this is my center mark here. I just need to make the lines a little longer so I can see them. Okay. I didn't get them very long. There we go. And then I'm going to center my snowman on that mark, which is the one that's like two, what was it? Three and three quarters inches from the center. Vertical, vertical center, I should say. I'm going to put my snowman in there, get it all lined up really nice. And this is usually how I do mine because, you know, the, the machines have had the snowman for quite some time. So if you have a Stellaire Altair Meridian like that, you will need to, of course, use your app and you'll have to use a regular hoop to have the little bugs in here to fix it to do the. Um, but if you have a Quattro, if you have, you know, all of these, you could use your snowman just like I'm doing. So a lot of machines have the snowman. OK, so I got my snowman in there. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm on the embroidery screen. I'd already chosen this, and we know that gather is going to be up here at the top, and then together is going to be over here. So, And you can see that my wreath is down here, okay? So I'm going to use layout. Um, if you have an old one of the older machines, it's actually under edit. This says edit up here, but the newer ones say layout. And I'm just going to use the snowman. So I'm just going to touch my snowman. This is how easy it is to use a snowman. Don't be afraid to use it. It's super, super simple. Okay, so I'm just going to hit that. I'm going to hit OK down here and scan. And it's going to line this up for me. Now, I am going to look at one thing after it does this. Because I, I must, I think I hit the hoop the last time I did this. I'm just praying that it turns out this time. And you don't need to, I, I don't have to fix it. But if we have to fix it, we have to fix it. I can show you what I did to fix it because it took me, I had to fix it. <laughs> All right, so it found the, I think it's finding the snowman. All right, so it says to remove it. And I'm okay. So it, it, it centered it up for me. And you can see my needle, whoops, right here. Get over here again. My needle is right down, going to come right down in the center. Here, okay. Now, I also want some a piece of tearaway underneath, so I'm just going to carefully lift this up and slip a piece of this. I've got this big um, pre-cut tearaway. I'm just going to slide under here because I like um, this. Probably would be fine without the tearaway, but it just makes me feel better that there's just a little extra stabilizer. Okay, now the one thing I want to show you is I'm a little nervous. Like I said, I had a little problem the first time I did this. So I'm going to actually show, I'm going to look at this. And I just hit the projector on, on this machine. Now this machine has a projector, okay? And I'm just going to check to see where my letters are down here to make sure it's okay because I this what happened is my T came over here on my wreath pattern and I didn't I don't want it there so I'm going to pull this projector down see this is the projector here I'm going to pull this down I'm going to look and see where my letter T is I want to make sure now see it's coming down over onto my um onto my um, wreath pattern again. And this is exactly the same place it was. So when I centered it up, it is actually coming down on here about a quarter of an inch. And so what I'm going to do then before I start, I think everything's okay, but I'm going to move this up because it is not, it's going to sew on my wreath section and I don't want it to do that. But you can't move it too far because remember, we don't want to go over on the other end. So I just I just wanted to make sure most of the time that it's it's perfect, but I don't know if it's because of something else or what, but I had this problem the first time. So since I have a camera, I can see 
now, but it's just a little bit on the, the section I wanted on and I should be fine now, okay? So I'm not gonna move it in too far because I don't wanna go off the other end, okay? So I think this one, if you look at my other pillow, it's only on just a teeny bit, okay? Like about an eighth, not even an eighth of an inch. And I am gonna leave it right there just to make sure it doesn't go off the other end and that should be good right there okay so i did move it up a couple of bumps okay and it extended about yep into the resection and i don't know why in unless there was a mistake in the instructions about the measurement that's the only thing i can think of is that there's actually a mistake in the measurement um so i'm gonna go ahead and tear this put this in um I'm going to tear this in half so that it's not so big. But I think that's the only thing I can think of is I think the measurement might be about a quarter of an inch off, like maybe a misprint in the book. And um, I just, that's what I'm thinking because it's just a hair, a hair off. Okay. So anyway, that's how I fixed it is I just, I just moved it straight up. I didn't move it this way at all. I just moved straight up. Okay. So we should be okay. So I could actually look, if I want to look at it, just make sure. See, we can kind of look over here at the other parts of it and it's, everything looks good over here. Okay. And then, yep, that looks good. And then we can go over here and make sure that all these are not like going off the bottom or anything. Okay. And that's why I love the, the projector. So if you have one of these machines with the projector, it is awesome. <laughs> so when you have, when you have something like this but if you're using your snowman just be aware that you might possibly have to just go straight up maybe just a couple of bumps so that it's just on this this inner piece i don't want it to be too far in um because i don't want it to go off on the other end so we should be okay all right okay so i'm gonna go ahead and okay see and i'm just above where my snowman so it looks like it must be about a quarter of an inch. So um, I think then it was set of three and three quarters inches. It might need to only be about three and a half from the edge. Okay. And the other way you can check to make sure that it's okay is the old fashioned way. You can always hit this little button and it will do the little run around tracing in the hoop. And then you'll know where the bottom is going to be. Okay, so that if you don't have the projector, do that. And then you can see like, oh my, it's gonna go down past there. All right, so just that's what I, and so this looks at like it's about a quarter of an inch higher than it was. So I'm gonna take my snowman off. I think we're gonna be okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and slide this back under here now. Right? And you just wanna be careful if you're using these magnetic hoops that nothing slides on you. So I'm always real careful when I do this. All right. I think I'll be, I think that'll be okay. All right. Okay. So yeah, so it looks like it's about a quarter of an inch, maybe higher. Yep. If that's the thing with the projector, Nancy, it is nice. I mean, it, it, the, these machines are not a cheap machine, but man, I tell you what, that projector is the bomb. I love it. I don't lose near as much stuff. So what happened to me is I did the gather without checking it and I started together and it was way down here on my, on my thing down here. And so what I ended up doing is I ended up scooting the pattern up then, and I had to rip down here and get it, you know, so. Um, your small hoop slips, who was saying that Jackie? Um, Jackie, normally when they slip, they, that means that you don't have it lined up completely on the edges. Normally when mine slip, it's because I don't have them lined up well. So just make sure you have it lined up. Okay. When you put it on. All right. So the first step, and I'll tell you the colors I use. The first step is going to be the placement line for the word gather. 
up here. So we're going to do that first. And then I'll do, I'll talk to you about what's going to happen for the next couple weeks and stuff. Well, once we get this going. So this is going to be the placement line for gather. And I'm going to get my little parts. I'm going to make sure that my camera does not hit my boot here. So I got to get my parts out of my bag here. So we're going to need the G and the Ather. Hopefully the camera's not moving so much. All right, so we're going to do the same thing we did that I did in the video last week. Um, we're going to use our little our little mat, and I gave you the everybody the link to this. So if they need to make a little ironing mat, it works very well. I try not to remove the hoop from the machine unless I have to, because these hoops can It's very difficult to not move the top loop. Okay, so I'm very very careful when I do this, when I move, you know, when I have to take it out. And I do have to take it out a little bit to do the, the um, iron. Okay. So it's going to do the placement line first, and then we'll do the, we'll iron our little pieces in. This is the one I always, always love to do. Um, the pre-cutting for is like words like this because they're so hard to trim in the hoop they're they're so little and so much of it <laughs> that i always want to um i like to pre-cut these when i do especially cursive letters i think i find them very difficult to trim all right so i think we're getting there oh it has to do a little bit of the h and i think the e yet Thanks, Jody. Thank you very much. I was very honored to take care of my father. That was an honor. I will appreciate, I will, you know, I, I have no regrets. It was a good year for me too. I mean, I got to take care of my dad. He was only not home for one week. So I was very proud that I could do that for him. All right. So now we need to take off, you know, we, and I did this in the video with the wreath. We're going to take off our, this is our, the paper from our heat and bond here. Okay. Get our G and I'm going to do the G first. Now I've got my little iron heated. I hope it's heated up. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Now this I'm going to have to take out. So I'm going to be very, very careful and I'm going to slide this out. You just got to be very careful when you do this. Okay. This is the hardest thing about these magnetic hoops is you don't want to move stuff. Okay, so I, but I knew Dean to bring it back towards me so I can get these in. So I'm going to lay this in to my placement line. And I'm going to get my little ironing pad here and we're going to slide it under there. We're going to, oops, maybe, make sure you don't get your, your uh, move your paper. There we go. So I'm going to do let's do the G first because it's separate from the rest of it. So get it all and, and you want to make sure that you're very careful with the outlines. Get my little iron and we'll just press it down. Try not to hit your marks with your iron <laughs> too much. I don't need these anymore on this side so we should be okay. Sometimes it's nice to use a water soluble pen if you have one that comes off okay when you're now see this one's a little off and if they're a little off just you know when they're still warm you can kind of shift them a little bit okay so that looks better. So there's the G and then there's a little jump clip on this one. So we're going to take the jump clip out of here so we don't have that under our fabric. I think everything else is okay. And we're going to put other in this one. And what I do with these long, like when they're long words like this, I just do, you know, a little bit of it at a time. I try to kind of get it started. And then I kind of hit it with the iron and then I just work my way up. So we're going to do just a little bit of the A first, get it all a little first part started. Okay. So that it kind of holds it down. Okay, 
And then I'm going to have to pull this out a little bit more. And I'm going to be very careful. Okay. Okay, and I'll put my little, I'm just going to kind of get it started here, kind of get it fairly organized. And I used um, the first color I did in my matching thread to this fabric, and it's my Nestle's 0145. It's, these are the brother colors I'm using. Okay. Okay, I'm going to stick my little mat in there again. I got part of the A done. Let's, let's just work on the T next. Okay. Take your time doing this because if you if you take your time, it'll go in real easy. I'm going to try to leave my center mark at least partially there. So if I need it again for something, I will have it. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to have to pull back a little bit more. This is the one I, I was scared to do. But if you're just very gentle and take your time. Okay, and then I think I've still got a little ironing pad left. I'm going to do a little bit more press there. I think I just got rid of my center mark. Oh, well. Hopefully we won't need it again. With any luck. You can always measure it again. If I need it. Just don't get rid of your other one over on the other side. <laughs> it's over underneath my, my hoop, so it should be fine. All right. That looks pretty good. Okay, these are the ones that are a lot easier if you can pre-cut them, these big ones, okay? All right, so that looks pretty good. Don't forget to take your mat out, your, your ironing mat out, okay? And then I'm going to be very gently putting this back in to, and what I'm doing, can you see what I'm doing over here? I'm pushing on this part, not the hoop, okay? to put it back in because then it'll slide right back in, all right? Okay. Now, with again, with these, these are gonna be motif stitches as you can see here by the front. You can see it's motif stitches. And I don't need to use the second step, which is going to be a tack down. So if you're trimming in the hoop, make sure that you you do this step but i'm going to skip it because i don't need it so i'm just going to hit my negative positive needle and i'm just going to go down to the overcasting so what i've done is i like to use matching thread for each of my fabrics for everything that way i don't forget because you will see like your tack down stitches through your motifs if you're cutting in the hoop. So make sure you're matching your fabric for these, okay? And I always do anyway, because I've gotten burned a couple times, you know. I've just, I've forgotten and then I, you could see it and I don't like that, so. Okay, so we got gather in there. The little flippers down. All right, so I think we're ready to do the overcasting. So hopefully, And this takes a little bit. So this is the part that I knew would take a little bit. So I thought we could talk a little bit about what's coming up for the, um, and I'm not sure that I got it in there very well. Okay, so this is the problem with moving these in and out. And I don't know if you can see this. Let me cut this. When you have to move this in and out, sometimes I have movement, okay? And I am not happy because I'm seeing white above my letters. So if that happens, you can fix it, okay? I have my camera and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna turn this camera back on because I am not happy with that showing. So we'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll work with it, okay? And I kind of figured this might happen. So I have to go back to the beginning and I'm kind of glad it did because then you can see what I did. If you look here, can you see how this is not lining up up here? And it will line up perfectly, but I'm going to have to use the camera to line it up. Okay. So we'll, we'll just do use the camera. And I'm going to turn the camera back on. I haven't moved the design at all. But I'm going to turn my camera back on and we're going to line this up. So if you look here... I can see all the stitching 
and it's way out of the way. So I'm going to pull this down and we're going to get this, we're going to get this lined up. Because can you see it? How it's off? And this has happened to me several times when I've worked with these kind of things, especially when I'm working with these hoops and I have to take them in and out. So we're going to, we're going to fix this by looking at the, the letters and we're going to line it up with the camera. And normally I don't have this problem if I use a regular hoop. So if you are using a regular hoop, you may not have this problem. Okay. But you might have this problem if you're using a snap hoop. And, and that's when I normally have this problem with something this large when I have to take it out. So I'm just going to move this up and I'm going to look at my A. This looks much better. I think I'm going to be okay. I'm just going to look, go up. I'm going to go move the, the camera up. I was hoping it might do this tonight just in case that I could show you how I fixed it. Cause this happened to me in the last one. So I just had to, I just had to do a little bit of playing around and it worked out just fine. I'm still not happy with it, but I think it might be okay. We'll see how it goes here. I'm just going to move it up. Okay, I'm still just a little off. And I do, I do, I've done a lot. Whoops, second here. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. I'm going to see if this is going to work. Okay. Still a little off, but it's better than I, better than it was. So hopefully it'll cover okay. And I will tell you, you will have less likely a hood of this happening if you're using a regular hoop. But I didn't grab my other hoop tonight, and I probably should have. So, but you, then you get to watch me fix it. So I'm just kind of looking. I think it's okay. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna try it again. It's a little off here. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's better. So I am going to try it. We'll just try it again. I'm going to go down to step number three and see what happens. I've had this problem several times. Um, and I'm glad I have a camera if that happens. If you have your regular hoops, you shouldn't have much problem, but they can still pop out. So if things pop out, you know, you could still have this problem. It will not be, it was just this big piece that I had the most problem with. Um, yes, I could have a little bit, but I don't know that I might have been pulling it out of alignment. Because I've done that. I've actually pulled it out, out of the hoop then. So I think it, it's, for me, it's better to use my camera. Um, and yes, you can. You can just pull it, but I've I've had problems with pulling it like out off. It was got off kilter then, so it's better to leave it be where it was. But you can see it's lining up much better now. Okay, so I wanted to talk about what's going to happen for the next couple of weeks while this is stitching because this one's going to take the longest. The rest of it doesn't take as long. Okay, these are just a lot of letters in this. Um, so next week, um, instead of having class next week, we will have, I'm going to do a video tonight of finishing up the pillow, doing the, the, the pillow back, because I'm going to do the pillow back differently than it says in the instructions to do it. So I wanted to show you how I was going to do it. And then also, um, that so that'll be what we're going to do this this um i'm going to do that tonight after the class i'll finish this up and then i will um i will do the video for you okay then that'll be next week which is what the 30th october 30th so i will actually put the video up before that so we won't have class next week and we won't have class on november 6th um, and then after that, we are going to start um, Candy Cane Lane. 
But in the meantime, during those two weeks, I need to get myself moved home. So I'm in the process of also moving myself home. Got a lot of papers to do and stuff, and I'm trying to get myself moved home. So um, I just need a couple of weeks without, on, without, so I can have a whole day on Sunday to move, okay? All right, this is looking good though. Looks much better now. Much, much better. So hopefully the, the rest of it will be okay too. We'll see how it goes. And I even stopped it the last time. I even stopped it before I went on to the rest of it and fixed it again. But I think it'll be okay. All right, so this is the candy cane lanes. Let me, I'm just going to switch the camera over for a minute while this is sewing. And I'll show you what we're going to be doing in November, okay? And I'll advertise it all. I hadn't advertised it yet because I wasn't sure what or where I would be. So things were kind of not, not going by schedule so I had to kind of wait and see okay so I'm gonna watch this as it's sewing so we're gonna do candy cane lane so here's candy cane lane and we're gonna start this on November 13th and we'll work on this before Christmas and this one's really really fun the, the embroidery is really actually pretty easy and it it all goes together real easy so it's a lot different than this one this one's more of one of the older, older ones. So it had a lot more um, steps to do than, than this one will. So we're going to work on this one starting November 4th, or 13th, Candy Cane Lane. And uh, we'll work on that through, um, see, I have the date over here. Let me grab my piece of paper while I'm watching this. Um, let's see. The 13th, 20th, 27th of November, and then the 4th of December, okay? So we'll, we'll work on that for four weeks, and then I will have, I'm going to take the month, the rest of the month of December off. I usually stop teaching about the time of my birthday. So, all right, so this is looking pretty good. What do you think? Whoops, I haven't got the camera down. So are there any questions about what's, so we won't have class next Sunday or the 6th of November while I move back home so I can have all my stuff at home. And then we will have class starting the 13th, okay? And, um, but I'll make you the video for how to make the backing later tonight and I'll upload it for you so you have the, the finishing of this pillow. All right, so, so far we're doing pretty good. It's looking pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put this back so we can watch it. Now, are there any questions about the what's coming up for, for November? I just needed a little time to get home. Um, I started moving some stuff yesterday, and uh, hopefully you can hear me okay now. And but see. How I got it lined up. It looks pretty good. Let me get a little closer so you can see. Can you see? It's looking pretty good. And there's a little bobble up here, but I don't think most people will ever notice it. And I don't know why it does that. I I don't know if it's because I have to take out the hoop so many times. Um, that's one reason why I'm not super hip on cutting everything pre-cut because then I'm more likely to have this problem. You see, it wouldn't have been a problem if I'd been trimming in the hoop, see. But for these big letters and everything, it is easier to um, cut it out in advance. So you take, you have this, you can have this problem. And when you have cameras, you can just lined it up. Now, if I would had um, like a Quattro or a Dream Machine, I could have still lined it up by scanning or the like Stellaris, Meridians, and Altairs. I could have still, I could have just scanned it and used the picture on the screen to get it lined up. So you could have still done that, okay? So those, most, a lot of us have those cameras on our machines. So, you know, it's not I, I, I would say a lot of you that are watching probably have those cameras, some sort of camera on the machine to line things up, if that happens. So, 
But I'm actually, this is going to be okay. It's actually lining up pretty good now. So with any luck at all, our tea won't go over the bottom. <laughs> so, but you know, you, you live and learn while you work on things like this. And, and it's good if I have a problem while I'm showing you so that you can see me fix it. Because I, I fix a lot of things. And, um, you know, really, I can see it a little bit up here. But I don't think you're going to notice it once you, once you get the whole pillow up. And there's a little spot right here, I think, but it's not that bad. But you take that chance with these hoops and also with cutting out your designs in advance. It is lining up pretty well, though. Pretty well. I should have just get, grabbed my my nine and a half by fourteen hoop, my just regular one, because because that probably would have taken care of my problem. I notice it more with the snap hoops when I have this problem. I think it looks pretty good. And I think part of it is just that you know they're not like. I think part of it, you know, I put the I put the ironing pad up in there, and this is such a large item that it could pull my fabric a little bit. Um, but I'm 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 going to be happy with this. It's going to be fine. I have never used those other hoops. Um, I think it's Anna. Yeah, I've never used the other hoops. Um, I have all these snap hoops and I've never used those because they're, I have all these other hoops. I never, I don't normally have much trouble with these hoops, um, but I have had a little bit of trouble with this particular project and I think it's just because of the pre-cutting. So if you are not pre-cutting your fabric, if you are just cutting in the hoop, you most likely will not have a problem. That's why I, most of the time I do, because I'm less likely to have any problems with lining up, even with regular hoops. Um, that's why I normally cut the hoop, just because I, I feel like, you know, it, I think it's safer and you're less likely to have any problems. Um, so you kind of take a little bit more of a chance when you're cutting like this, although it is nice to be able to cut and be able to iron it in. The smaller pieces seem to be less um, likely to have problems. Like this is a large piece. And usually when I have problems, it's with a large piece. Okay. So I don't know. I have never used those hoops because I just don't have them. Um, I think they might hold a little tighter. Yes. Which is if that's what your question is, Anna. So yes, they might hold a little tighter than these do but you can see this is lining up pretty good and we just had them you know we had to work with it a little bit but you know sometimes you got to do that all right so it's coming around it's, it looks good though and also with with um motif stitches they're not very wide so they don't give you any wiggle room or if something doesn't quite line up right and i really like using satin stitches on things because i think they're more likely to have you won't have problems um if you trim in the hoop you're very you're really less likely to have problems so. but you got to see me fix it and I would have just used my scanning camera if that's what I had in my machine. So I know a lot of you have those too, but the projector is neat on this because I can even really get, you know, very accurate then. As you can see, it's, it's pretty good. There's a teeny little weird spot down here, but I don't think it's ever that you're gonna notice it. Yeah, it's looking good.
Now I didn't have as much trouble. Well, you know, you could. Um, somebody asked if you could add a little bit. And normally I don't have to. Because if I did on this one, if I added a little bit, it probably would show on the outside. The fabric would then show on the outside of the of the fab of the of the stitches. Because these are so narrow. Like this is way narrower than any stitches than I that I normally use when I digitize. So I think part of it is that this is so narrow that you have very little room to work. And yeah, if you made these just a hair bigger, it might help, but then it also might show on the outside, which I don't like either. So, you know, you're kind of, you know, which way do you go? You know. But it's it's fine. I got it lined up. Okay. So there's gather. This was the wolf. We got to do a couple little pieces inside. I forgot about those. Because I thought about adding a little bit, but I thought, well, if I add something, is it actually going to be okay? <laughs> you know, I I don't normally add for my own things. When I digitize my own appliques, and if I do cut them out, I always digitize with my covering stitches in set. And some of you who have taken my software classes know that I, I always digitize with my um, with my satin stitches or whatever inset by 60 to 70 percent. And then I know I'm not going to have a problem. But I don't know, you know, every company is different when they do their digitizing. So I never know what, um, you know, where it's going to end up for the covering stitches. And I would say this is 50-50. So they've just done 50-50, so it's 50% off and 50% on, which can be a problem sometimes. Okay, so there's gather. And it still looks fine. It looks fine. Okay, so now let's do, we're, the next letter is going to be the letter T. So I'm going to turn my camera on just to verify that my T is still okay. I'm going to turn, whoops, second here. See if it'll let me do it with my, I want to see just to make sure that it didn't move too much because it starts over here and it comes over here. Looks like it's going to be okay. So I think we'll be all right. Okay. So T is next and I use for the T, I am using, oh, you know what? I used green this time my first one I had red but I didn't have enough red left so my T the larger T I made in my green this time so I'm going to use my have to change my color here I'm going to use my um, meadow green it's 1089 to make my so let's let's sew it out and if there's a problem we may have to fix it let's see how it goes the first thing, this is going to be step number four. It'll just be the placement line. I hope I take my paper still under there. I think it is my stabilizer. Let's see how we did here. It's coming over. Now this T is pretty good sized. Okay, so see it just a little bit on, so we're good. It's just barely on, but it's just on, so it should be okay. All right, should be okay. And like I said, when I did this before, I actually had to move this up a little bit. And I could, again, if I wanted to, I could just take the whole design and just move it a little teeny bit up. But I think this will be fine because it's on the center panel. So whoops, I got a little tail sticking up here. So we're going to get this off. Lay this in there. And see, this one I shouldn't have to move, really, to get to the letter. I'm just going to lay my little ironing pad under there very gently. And then we'll just press the T on. Oops. See if I can get it in from this way. My cord's long. So we get it pressed down. Yeah, the gather looks pretty good though. 
going to still have to bring this out a little bit. I don't, like I said, I don't like to remove this unless I have to. I'm going to have to slide it back a little bit so I can get to the top of the T here. There we go. What was that question? What about the satin stitch? Will you go into the other section? Um, I don't know. It, I don't think so. I think it'll be okay. It's going to be right up to it. This one's over. It's this one's back just a little bit further than my first one, but it'll be fine. It's not that it's not going to, it's not going to go over like, you know, a quarter of an inch or anything. It's going to be close, but it, it should be fine. Uh oh, so now see, I had another problem. Did you hear my arm just move? All right. So now we're all going to be, is everybody is everybody breathing? This is where we have to take the whole hoop off. So if that happens, I've had this happen. I moved my arm, okay? I just moved my arm. And if that happens, the whole thing is off alignment now, okay? So I'm gonna have to very gently pull this out of the machine. Let me show you how to fix this because I've had this happen too. This happens a lot with applique, okay? So I'm going to slide this up onto my table, okay? And if this happens, this is what you do. Turn the machine off, just turn it off. Don't do anything, just turn it off and turn it back on. And this often happens to me when I'm doing applique, um, that I have, especially, I've got two or three hoops that are very tight. They don't like to go into my the, the receiver over here, okay? I just turned the machine off, I didn't do anything, Just just, I took this out and I turned the machine off. I'm going to let it reset. Okay. And then it's going to come up and say, okay, to recall the previous, the previous design. Yes. So I'm going to hit okay. And then it's going to recenter itself and, and start right where I left off. Okay. So now I'm going to gently pull this back and I've got a hold of the fabric right here. I've got a hold of the fabric. I'm just going to gently pull this back. Hopefully. And then I'm going to push it back in over here. And if you're C, I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to push against the green part. And I'm going to be more gentle this time. And I'm holding on to the receiver. There we go. Okay. So that, that happens when you're doing applique. If you take your, your, your hoops in and out a lot, it happens. Now, I don't need to do the straight stitch again. Um, I don't need my the, um, the second straight stitch, which is the uh, tack down line. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my negative positive needle again and go down to the decorative stitch. So hopefully, with any luck at all, we're still lined up. So let's see what happens here. But it happens that, um, and I, I don't know how many times I've taken my hoops out and had that happen. So, you know, God was just wanting me to have to show you all these new things. <laughs> so. you were Oh, you were taught to hold the arm of the machine and putting the hoops in. Up. Yes. Well, Jan, I can do that. But in this case, I couldn't reach it. It was back so far, I didn't reach it very well, and I and it still moved, because I had my finger back there, but it still moved. But you can see it's, it's pretty well lined up. It looks pretty good. Okay? And it's going to be right to the edge of the section. But you know what? It's going to be okay. It'll be absolutely okay. And the other thing is with these motif stitches, they sometimes, you know, they're, they're gyrating around a lot. I think things can get off easier that way because of the movement of the machine. Also, yeah, so this is about the same as my other one. My other T might have been down about an eighth of an inch, but you know what? It's going to be fine. It's still going to be pretty. But I like satin stitches on some stuff. The a lot of the original, um, a lot of the original Kimberbell designs were done with these motif stitches. 
And I've noticed they don't do as many of them now as they used to. Oh, to make sure that the satin stitch is still lined up. If that happens, what will wind it back up? You asked that, Anna? Is Yes, I could have turned the camera back on and looked. But normally, if I just turn the machine off and back on again and let it reset, then it will line itself back up again. So I normally don't have to look again. This looks good. This is good. And we'll just keep going. We're, we're going we're gonna to get through it, I promise. I figured you needed to see some of the, you know, I have I have faux pas and problems too. And I think it's good if I have problems like that in the classes because then I can show you how to fix it. With these cameras and scanners and stuff, it sure has helped be able to fix things so much better. Okay, so let's see how the O goes. I had, the only trouble I had on this section before I did have a little trouble with the gather before, but I had trouble with the O. So let's see how it goes. Otherwise, I'll go grab some fabric and we'll 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 cut it in the hoop. <laughs> so hopefully I get it in there right this time. Okay. Hopefully I'm not melting my bag over here. All right. So we need this one I did with the Nestle's. I think it was brown. Yeah. So my placement line, I'm gonna get my brown thread back, my same Nestle's that I did all of the top one with. And the O is really strange on this because it's sort of sideways. And um, it looks like it's like they tipped it sideways. It's just weird. Okay, so now we're going to do the placement line. So this is step number seven in the machines. We'll do the placement line. Placement line. See if we can get most of the rest of this done without having to take this out again. And for me, I always have to be careful not to um, wonk the, um, have the hoop come back and hit against my camera. Because I've always got a camera here and I'm always afraid I'm going to hit the camera, which causes problems. All right. All right. So let's see how we do with the O. This one caused me a little problem before, so hopefully I don't have to fix something else for you. Okay, so that obviously this one, we're gonna have to very carefully pull this out again. That's why this is so scary to do this. Because when you're doing embroidery or applique, you often have to pull these in and out. Okay, so I think, let's see here. This The O is kind of shape funny. So I was hoping, yeah, maybe I got it in there this time. I think I got it in backwards last time. That was my problem. And it didn't line up very well. So let's see how we do this time. So I got it in there. Where'd my little hoop pad go? Hope I didn't like sew it into my machine. Wouldn't that be a problem, huh? Where did it go? Did you guys see me pull it out? Oh, yeah. Well, it's not under there. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Found it. All right. So slide this in here. You guys are supposed to be watching me not to leave it in the machine, okay? I'm going to pull this back a little bit more. Okay. This is the one I had problems with because it's just kind of a weird shape. I don't know. It kind of made it weird because it's like sideways. Okay. But it's nice to be able to see some of the things you can do with cameras and all that kind of stuff, you know? All right. So I'm going to pull that out. Don't let me leave that in there and sew it into my project, okay? I'm going to carefully push this back and try not to move this thing again there we go these usually slide in and out really well um these usually slide in and out really well but the um the i've got a couple of my bigger hoops that are really really tight okay so everybody got their whoop the second here got the wrong one i gotta go i gotta advance it one okay 
so we can get to our motif stitch. I forgot to advance through number eight to number nine. All right, we'll see how we did here. So everybody got their fingers crossed? So far, so good, everybody. So I guess the moral to the story about doing applique with pre-cuts is you have very little wiggle room if something doesn't line up right, okay? Um, so I, I don't normally do applique like this. I usually cut it in the hoop. You're less likely to have any problems. However, this works very nicely and you can get everything, you know, everything's neat. You don't have to sit there and trim. Like this would have been quite a job to trim, okay? I trimmed the whole wreath before that's why I thought, well, maybe we'll try it this way. But I'm glad that I had some issues so that you can see that you can fix the problem if you need to. Now, I did notice there's a little spot on the on the end of the gather. So I'm going to, when we get done, I'm, before I do the second hooping, I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix that. Because it's just a little bit off, and I, I, I you can fix that. All right, I think this is going to be okay though. The T, the, the T and the O have been have been behaving themselves. And let's see, the G. How color did I use for the G? I think that one was orange. So here's the G. All right. So so far so good going to do the center part of it now. I think it's okay. I remember when I did the first one, I had to I had to cut this in the hoop because I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it lined up. And I think what I'd done is I flipped it the wrong way. Like I end for ended it or something and it just would not line up. Looks good now. I like this fabric. This was a piece I had in my stash somewhere. Yeah, so we're doing okay. Yeah, the end of my R is just a little funny looking. Might have to go back and fix that. I can show you how I can do that too. But it's always good if you have problems because then, you know, you, you see, A, that I also have problems. <laughs> and which I do. I mean, I have, I have, I, I always have something go wrong with almost every project. That's why I like to do them before I teach them so I can kind of anticipate anything that might be a problem. It's always good to be prepared, right? All right, so there's the O. So that turned out good. So now we're ready to do G. And G was um, the orange, and I think I used the bronze for that. It's this color. It's 1187 bronze. That's what I used for my G. Get that in here. This is going to be pretty. I like this one's a little bit different than the other one. I didn't have quite the same fabric, and I also didn't have enough of a couple of the colors, so I had to kind of substitute a little bit, change the colors up for the letters and stuff. All right, so step number 10 is the um, placement line then for the G. Get that one in here, get my G ready. And then just make sure you're not, you know, nothing's hitting anything. Looks good. There's my G. Looks like I always have a little tail. Here's my little tail. Get that out of there. Okay. So here's the G. So let's put this one in. Okay. And of course, we got to pull it out again. So you're over tempting fate here. Just, just very carefully. 
second. Just wants me to have to fix something again. All right, so get the G in here. There he is. Ugh. Way up here. Okay. Get that. Let's get this one down. Right. Looks pretty good. I think we're good, so I'm going to carefully put this back. Get my little little thing out of there if I can get a hold of it. Where'd it go? Come back here. Can't get a hold of it. There we go. All right. Those little hoop pads will work really well. So did everybody get a chance to make one? Yes, you could, Jan. The only thing is then you would have to change threads a lot of times. So yes, you could do it that way. You could do, go do all this, the outlines first. Or you could do all the placement lines first. Oops, sorry, forgot to do the down again. There we go. Kimberbell has a tendency to usually do their stuff that way, actually. Um, that they do like, um, they'll do all the, like the, placement and tack down lines and then they go back and do all the covering stitches but this one's an older one so they did it differently so but you would also have to change the thread swap it's up to you you could do it you can just skip ahead you want to do it that way looks like it's lined up good though There's not as many little pieces, like little skinny pieces in the second half. So it was easier to do the second half. This one had a lot of little skinny stuff that was more likely to get off. But I don't know if you can see up here. I don't know if you can quite see it yet, but there's a little white spot up here on my on the tail of my R. And I might actually fix that. When it's all done, I might fix it before I unhoop it. And then, um, then it'll cover a little bit better. And I don't think you'll even see it. I can't remember what color I made. I guess I made the G the same color before. It was the T I had to change because I didn't have enough red left. I think this looks fine. Yeah, so I think maybe what I would tell people is if you have not done this yet, maybe try using your regular hoops. Um, yes, you could do that. Yes, Jan, you could do that. And then just only have to take the hoop out once. You could do all the placement lines and then stick it all in. Yes, yes, that would be that would be okay too. Yep. Yeah. Because then you could just take, but then you have to take the whole machine, take it all the way out of the hoop, or all the way out of the machine. And I don't usually like to do that when I'm embroidering uh, appliques like this. So um, that would be also an, another option, uh, opportunity to get it off alignment. <laughs> so yeah, so that'd be another option though. I don't usually have too much trouble with these snap hoops. They, they stay really well actually. Um, but this one, I think partially is because the, the designs, you know, the designs are so thin, the applique parts are very narrow compared to, if you look at most of their other designs, most of them are, are wider than this, like most of their satin stitching and stuff. These most teeth stitches are very narrow. So, okay. So we're going to do the E, we're going to do E and T yet for this hooping. And the E, I believe, is the gold. Yeah, it's the gold. So I think I use my check my yeah my brass. So it's 328 brass that I use for my gold. Oop, 
a second here, I'm stuck. Look at this, whoops, there we go. Now it's, whoop, and it's still not going. It's like I've got a little knot at the bottom of this, evidently. Sometimes they get a little loop on the bottom and then they stick. There, I think I got it. Get like a little half knot at the bottom. All right, so we'll do the E. This is the placement line. So this is number 13. This is the placement line for the E. You've got to find my E over here. E. It has paper on the back of it yet. out of there as usual i talked to ron about that all right so let's pull this back a little bit and my little hoop mat looks pretty good just carefully pull it up Oop, where'd it go there it is okay lay this in but you know Embroidery can be a frustrating process sometimes. <laughs> and this has been a tough, I thought this was a hard project. I mean, I've, I've done a lot of these Kimberbell pillows. And I thought this one was actually pretty challenging. It's fun. And it was, it turned out so pretty, but it is, it is pretty challenging. It has a lot of parts to it and, you know, a lot of applique and Hooping, multi-hooping and everything. I think I've got it in there pretty straight. Here we go. All right, look at the E in there. So let's do the E. Let carefully push it back. Okay. And then I'm going to skip number 14 to number 15. Maybe if I can get my finger to work. There we go. And do the E. I'm actually glad that this happened because then, you know, it just gave me another opportunity. And you see that sometimes I run into things like that when I'm doing this stuff. So yes, Jan, Jan suggested taking, doing all of the outlines and then taking it out one time and putting everything in. And then, and then doing, going, then you'd have to go back and forth to find, to get all of the, the um, decorative lines. So yes, you could do that, definitely. And maybe that would have been a better option. But I normally don't have much trouble. It was just, I don't know what it was about this design. Maybe it's just me. And I think partially, like I said, I think partially it could be the fact that it is um, decorative stitches that do a lot more gyrating around, like the hoops moving around a lot more. And it just seems like maybe that could be causing a little bit of the problem. So. And they're very narrow. Very, very narrow. I think they're only, I would guess, two and a half, possibly three millimeters. And that's not wide enough, really, for a satin stitch. Most satin stitches are, I like to make them at minimum three and a half and lots of times i'll do four if i have enough room but these motif stitches are quite narrow i haven't measured them but i bet i bet they're only about three maybe could be three and a half possibly i usually make mine wider than that And it also, you know, keeps you from having to be quite so precise. If you're a little off on something here, then, you know, then you got a little more wiggle room. But this is an older design, you know, and it is, and they, um, you know, they've changed a lot of their embroidery, um, the designs and stuff over the years. This was, this one was done quite a long time ago. And it was originally a sewing pattern only. 
And so then they made it into embroidery. So, you know, this, this was one of their first patterns in embroidery. So they've gotten better also. All right. You got one more letter, everybody. And I'll show you how I'm going to fix my little tail. I think I might want to do that because I'm, it might want to come undone for me. So I'll show you. All right. So now we're going to do the T. And the, this T I did in, I think, in the brown. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. It was in the rust. It was in the rust. So I'm going to use my brown stone for that. That's the one I had matching for that. And you can see I, I kind of just match my fabrics with my threads. So this one was brownstone, and it's number 1380 for the for the rust tea here. Oops, a second, I'm having trouble getting it out. Doesn't want to come out of there. There it comes. All right. And then we'll fix the we'll fix my little R here so that it it doesn't unravel or anything. And I don't think you'll even see it because I don't need to do much. I just need to do a little section like from here to here. And it's actually not that bad. As I'm closer to it, I can see it a little bit better now. I think it'll be okay actually. Must have been just a hairish off up here, right, right along this bottom part. All right, so here's the T. Here's our placement line. Oh, sure, you have to go all the way back there again. Then I have to make me take it out. If they would have started on the other end, it would have been a lot easier. There we go. All right, so put the T in. This T is a little smaller than the first T. Okay. Get this in here. Oops, still have to come back towards me a little bit. There, there we go. Just got dive bombed by a bug. All right. See if we've got it all in there. Whoops. I think I've got that one tacked down too well right there. Let's see if I can stick the tip of my iron up in there. There we go. I think that's pretty good. All right. So I'm going to skip number 17 and go to 18. Now, the last step on this particular side, um, piece is um, not, we're not going to stitch it. We're just going to stitch the T. And then we're not going to stitch the last step, number 19. It's like a placement line. And I think, it, I don't know if it was something to do with the way they digitized it. But... All right. It's looking okay. But we might, we might still fix this. I'll, I'll show it to you up close and see what you think. I don't want it to unravel or anything. The rest of them look good. It's all of them look real good. But I wondered, you know, when I started this up again, if if there'd be if I'd have the same kind of problem I kind of did, and I do it, I did. But that's okay. Just going around. And I'll show you how to hoop the second half, and then I'll probably just do the rest of the second half. And once you get it hooped and ready for the next half, you shouldn't have any problems. It's just the same procedure we've been doing here, because it will take me a little while. The second half takes a while because of the um, because of the um, pumpkin. The little pumpkin takes quite a while because it's got a big satin stitch around it. It looks good. I don't 
know. I might just leave the little art. It doesn't look bad. It's just a little teeny bit, but I, I think it's caught. I wish I, I, I'll go get my glasses while it's finishing up here. It's just the hair is soft, but I think it might be still caught. Let me see. Yeah, not really. I think I might, we might have to fix it. Let's fix it real quick while we're in here, okay? I'll show you how I'll fix that. There, down there at the at the end of the little R that kind of squishes down, there's a little bit, a little bit that isn't caught, and I don't want it to unravel. So I'm gonna we're gonna fix it, and that is the end of the side anyway. So we can just get it fixed, and we'll just go down to that very end part. Whoops, here. So I'm caught. There we go. I'll just go down and fix it. But when you cut pre-cut, things can be very, very close. These are very, very, you know, narrow little skinny letters. And all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the beginning. It's going to go back like I was going to sew it again. Okay. And then I'm going to turn on my camera again. And I'm going to go, oh, I'm sorry. It made it mad. You have to lift your foot to use your camera to see now. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to turn on my camera and we're going to go look at this little section right up here. Okay. So let's see. Let's go look at this little section and bring it up here. And I can see that it's, I don't know if it might be turned a little bit. wonder if I just need to go boop like that. Whoop, not quite that, not that much though. Let's see. I said, okay. No. Nope. I'm just going to move this down a little bit. And it looks like I might need to go up. I'm just going to see if I can sew that little end piece again, just to make sure that this is not going to unravel, although it is pretty close. There. I think I got it. I think it was just tipped a little bit. So to find that, we're just going to, I just want to kind of do from here up, like right along here. That's where the worst of it was, like from here up to about here. And all we need to do then is we need to find that section. All right, so let's just find it because everything looks pretty lined up that way. All right, so let's see if we can find it. We'll just go ahead to gather, and then I'm just going to move it ahead. Whoops, I, I got a little overzealous there. We're just going to move it ahead here until we get to the section where that, that little tail is. And I'm on the, the little outline right now. I'm just going ahead. I'm just going ahead like a thousand stitches you know, a time because there's a lot. Of, whoops, sorry, I, I got a little overzealous again, didn't I? Okay, here we go. Nope. Let's see here. That's the end of it. So I have to back up actually a little bit. Those are the two little pieces in the center. Did those kind of at the end. Let's see here. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm getting close. So we're going to just back up. I got a little overzealous and went ahead of it. So we're just going to back up here so I can see where it's at. So it's going up the R now and down the side. And I kind of want to start at the end down here. So like right towards the end. So let's go ahead a little bit more. Whoops, back. I'm sorry. Back a little bit more. And then start maybe towards the end here because this was not quite covered at the very end. And let's see if I can, we can get it lined up a little bit more. And then I'm just going to kind of come around to about right in here. And then it was really good. I think it was just a slightly rotated. So I just rotated a little bit. But I was afraid I might have a little bit. Whoops. Sorry, I didn't go back far enough. I'll try it again. I got to get back over here. <laughs> it must have been going this way. All right, let's see. But, you know, this is something that we have to do sometimes to fix stuff like this. And I do this all the time. I, I do a lot of fixing when I'm working. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's back up to about there. Okay. Now let's see if we can get it. But I just wanted to make sure that none of my fabric would ravel. Much better. There won't be any white showing out. And I don't think you're even going to notice because it's just barely, I mean, it's like barely over where it was. And then I'll just kind of go along the end and back up the side and then I'll stop. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now I'm just going around the corner. I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to just tie it off with my little tying button. Did you know you can use the tying button when you're embroidering now? That's something they added on the luminaires, like this little button here. You never used to be able to tie off when you embroidered. And now you can tie off. It's so cool. You can just tie off here and then cut. And then it's tied off at the end. I thought that was so neat they added that. All right. So see? Now that looks so much better. And it's covered. So I just moved it in just enough to cover that little section. And now you can't see the white. So it looks good. All right. So what do you think? So there's Gather Together. You got to watch me do all of those fun little things to fix it, huh? All right. So there's the Gather Together. What do you think? I think it looks good. Looks real good. There's a little section right up here that I could actually rip some of those little stitches out and it would, it would, it would mask it. So I might do that after class. These little, there's a little bit of right up in here that I could take out about right from here to here and it would mask those so you wouldn't see it. And then down here, I can't see it at all because it's dark. Okay. So now to do the second half of this, this is section three then. This is going to be the, um, the rest of other, you know, other, and then the pumpkin. So let's just get it hooped so we're ready to go. And then um oops, second here i'm gonna lay this back in here i'm gonna put this back in get our other design and let's make sure we got it the right orientation we'll look at it on the screen here and then i'll go through all the colors with you and then i'll just finish this after class and then i'll do the video for you for the for the making the back because i do the back different than they tell you in the instructions and then we'll come back and we'll start a new project in november so let's see here okay pes gather together nine by 14 and here's the her okay we need that one with the pumpkin and hit set now the pumpkin is all satin stitches and then these are but and then the rest of it has the little motifs again so you will just have to be careful you know in and out again a little bit all right let me put this back in the machine. I'm going to do the same thing. So remember, we had our little mark that we did. And I think mine's a little short again. So let me just mark this over a little bit. This is the mark we're going to go to this time since we marked. And, oh, I think I'm going to try to take the paper off. You know, I have stabilizer on the back. So let me take the stabilizer off this so that it's not in our way, or most of it anyway. We'll hoop that at you. I'll just pull as much, some of it off at least. And I'll come back and finish it. There we go. The stuff that might get in the way. All right. So then this one, as you can see, this is the end of the pillow and then H-E-R. So we still have to stay in the same orientation that we were. And I'm going to move it up. Let's put the snowman on here. Now this one, I remember, I just used the snowman. It was fine. This one was fine. We can look at with the camera again just to verify it's okay. But it, this one was absolutely fine. I don't know why the other one was so cantankerous, but it was Okay, so I'm going to put that under my needle, hit embroidery first, and put this under my needle, and find my hoop again. Slide this up, and I'm going to put the needle under. This is when, when I, and that's why you also notice that I left all of the batting and stuff on until after the all the embroidery is done, and then I'm going to trim this down, the the um, braid. 
because then I have a little extra room for hooping because I had a little more fabric to hoop to. So just leave it on. Don't cut it off after you get done with the braiding, with the quilting. All right, so I need to pull this over a little bit. Oops, boy, am I crooked, really crooked. Try to get it as straight as I can. You don't have a ton of wiggle room in these hoops, so you have to kind of, you know, keep it as straight as you can keep it. And make sure your hoops, your loops in there are straight. Boy, mine's not. Holy cow. I'm really crooked. Let's try this again. Sometimes I have trouble getting these in. Just have to kind of, there we go. That's better. Boy, goodness sakes. Really having trouble tonight. There we go. Um, yes, they will, Anna, but in this case, it's a pillow, so who cares if there's a knot on the back of it? If you're making a, a table runner, then yeah, but I just trim them down. They're, they're, they're not that bad. I mean, the tails are not that long. I just trim them down a little bit. They're fine. So, boy, did I get this sideways? Sometimes I get my hoop on sideways. Let's make sure I didn't get it on sideways because I'm really going to be crooked here. Like I said, you don't have a lot of wiggle room because this design is almost exactly um, <laughs> the nine and a half by 14. You know, you don't have a lot of, you know, if you're, you got to be pretty straight for it to actually read it. So, oh, then maybe I got it this time. So I don't mind knots on the back of my stuff, Anna. Like when you're doing the quilting and stuff, if you've got some knots, trim them down a little bit. Don't trim through the knot. But when you, when you, like when you, um, you know, because my stuff is not stuff like I'm taking to like quilt competitions. That's not the way I quilted if I was taking it to like a quilt competition or something because you don't want knots on the back. But, you know, if it's for a family member or something, you know, when you wash them, the little knots just kind of shrivel up into the, the embroidery and it looks fine. And, and I also try to use like kind of matchy matchy fabric or thread to my backing to keep it from not being quite so noticeable. Okay, so now I, it, it's not so cantankerous now. So we're going to hit the layout button again. My little snowman button, and then we're going to see if we can get it lined up. And I might turn the camera on just to verify we're okay, especially on the letters over here. Because we don't want it to be too, you know, we want the letters to like, although they're not real st perfectly straight, if you look at the picture, they're not like perfectly straight. And I think that's why they did it that way. So that if you were a little bit offish, you'd be okay. All right, so it's getting it. I didn't have any trouble with this end. Okay, remove the embroidery. Okay. So let's just turn the camera on. We'll just verify how we're doing here. Okay. So we hit the projector. And I want to look at mostly at the letters over here to see if the letters look pretty good. That's the part that I want to make sure that they look not, you know, pretty, pretty decent to the next letters, you know. All right. So see, like here's the H. And they look like they're pretty close to the to the edge, like the other one, so that they're not like way up in the air or something. <laughs> and then where the R is. Let's look at the end of the R. Make sure that it's not, see, it's not off the end. So we're good. <laughs> it's a little further on this end than it is on the other end, but we're okay. So I think this will be all right. But let's look at this. Let's look at the whole thing. You know, I might actually, let's do this. Let's see how this looks. I think the H looks okay. Because these seemed a little bit closer on this end. So let's just do this and just verify that I like it. I'm just going to scan it. So I can see the whole picture at once. So we're just going to scan the hoop. I just hit the scanning button, the little camera. I'll show you where it is again. But isn't it cool that we have all these cool tools? Okay, so see now here is the, see that looks good. Don't you think that looks okay? It's a little closer down here. But I'm afraid that if I scoot it down a little bit, and I could, 
scoot this over a little bit, see? Because these are a little lower to the bottom of the pillow. And so I could actually scoot it over to the to the right just a little bit. Don't you think? Yeah, I think it does too. So let's try that. So let me hit close. So the scan's up here. And then I'm going to hit the layout and move button. And so I just might scoot it down just a little bit, see? So that it looks like it might line up a little bit. Does that look a little bit better? I just hit it a couple times. What do you think? I think that looks a little better, don't you? Then they're not sticking up as high. What do you think? That better? But isn't it cool that we can use all these things to help us? I think that looks better. What do you think? Yeah, I think so too. All right, I'm happier with that. All right. So now we're going to, I think it's going to start with the letters. Yes, it does start with the letters. Now my H was done. It's like I have to find my other baggie with my, ooh, where'd they go? Here they are. Here's my baggie with my other letters. This is part three. And these, oh, I got to get my, my, I got to get my uh, tear away. And we'll do one more letter. One or two more letters and then I will, and then we will, you can finish it up and I'll just go through the colors with you. So you know what I use for colors and stuff. Oh, this looks good. You know? Got to have some problems sometimes to get the best results. But, you know, we have these wonderful, wonderful machines that have all these cool things in them. And I'll tell you what, it is awesome because you can fix a lot of problems. All right. So I think I used the H. I did my H in red this time. Let me look at it again. Yeah. So I had to change a couple of my letters. So mine's red. So I'm going to use my candle, candy apple red. So we got to use the projector tonight, the camera. Oh, and just by the way, this is the, this is the camera right here that I touched. I touched this to scan to get the design up on the, on the, on the, on the screen. So, and it's going to be basically the same icon for everybody, no matter which machine you have. Or if you have a, you know, like the Altair, Stellaire's, Meridian, that one you just have to take your picture and it'll come up. And that that's how I do a lot of lining up is with the scanner. I still use the scanner quite a lot. All right. So get these letters off. We'll do a couple more. Let, we'll do another letter and then I'll finish it up and then I'll do the backing as in a video for you tonight. Okay. Which is the scan? Oh, the scan. This is the projector, the little cone. And the scanner is the little, looks like a little camera right here. Okay, so they're right next to each other. All right, so we're going to do the H. Let's get the H on here. And this is going to be in my red. And my red was candy apple red, and it is um, 0020. I think I've done all the colors. I think I've... I've uh, used all the colors so far. Yeah, this dang little tail wants to stick up. There we go. All right, so I put the H in. So I'm just going to continue on just like we did did the other half. And did I stick my paper in here? Yep, I did. You guys are supposed to be watching me. Make sure I get my stabilizer in there. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to have to pull it out, put it in. But again, this is maybe a little more complicated project. It's very, I thought it was very fun. It was a little more challenging because I had a couple little problems like this. And you just kind of have to, now you know some ways to work through them. Because I just worked through a lot of those little problems with my camera. And, you know, there's not, honestly, there's not a whole lot I can't fix now since we have all these cool tools on our machines. It really, oh, sorry, sorry. I'm just putting this in, sorry. Yeah, I forgot to turn the camera. You guys are in charge of me tonight, okay? Get this in here. I've been doing um, 
I've been doing thank you cards all day, so I'm a little bit brain dead. Sorry. There's so many pieces of paper to do. <laughs> I, uh, this is the part that I've been dreading is all the paperwork and everything because I never really had to do all that before my parents did all that. So um, for my grandmother and my dad did it for my mother, so I haven't had to do all the papers and stuff. Okay, there we go. Let's put this back in very carefully and we're ready for the age. Have I ever thought about doing a mastery class? I mean, teaching one or, or taking one? Oh, Matt, like, whoops, second, I forgot my, forgot to skip. See, I told you, you're supposed to be watching me. Got to skip down to step number three. So I'm not doing that outline. There we go. I, I always forget. Oh, you mean a mastery class for the machine? Like the, I have, but those are the ones that I normally do on Shields Live on the Shields Sewing Center Wednesday classes. Um, because I don't have every single sewing machine here. So it's easier for me to do those at the store because then I have more machines available to me. So yes, so I, I'm trying to do a lot of different things with the machines to show people how to use the, you know, specific things on the machines. So those will be on Shields Live. I also put them on YouTube under Shields Live. So these usually are projects, you know, like this, this class is usually a project. So cool, this is work looking good. And then up here in the top, up here is the pumpkin. And so it does the three letters first and then it finishes, then it does the pumpkin. So it, I mean, it's it's just the same procedure. You know, you have to you have to you know iron your little piece in, and but let's go through the colors while this is sewn. So you don't have to sit and watch me do the whole thing. Do you want to watch a, another letter or two, or would you like me just to go through the colors that I use with you? It's really funny. If this gets too close to the edge, it always likes to make a little noise. Okay, so I did the red, the candy apple red for the H. The E I did in my brown. Again, so that's that Nestle's 0145. And then the R is gold. And my gold is brass 328. And then it goes up and does like the leaves and the pumpkin. So um, let's see. The stem I did in brown, and the uh, pumpkin is in the orange. I had like the bronze, which is the 1187. So if I hold this up, you can kind of see my numbers, I think. And then uh, the gold leaf over here was done with the with the bronze or the brass, sorry, 328. And then I did tan again. The soft tan 1005 for the bottom of the acorn. And then there's the little dark brown of the little top of the acorn. And then this leaf over here I did in the meadow green again, 1089. And then it just goes back and does the decorative stitches. So most of these, some of these were done, there was a bunch of tack downs and they did a lot of this all in kind of one step. And then it went back and did all the outlines. So that this one's done just a little differently. So like the placement and the tack down lines, and then it goes back and does all of the decorative stitches it wants for the for the pumpkin part. Okay, so it's just a little bit different. All right. So does anybody want me to do another letter? I'll do the other, another letter if you'd like. I don't want to keep you all night, but I thought maybe you'd like to see most of this one done. It is, it is. You know, this is not a simple simple project. It truly is not. So I think my E, we're, we need E, right? So E's the brown. Sure, is that okay? I could keep sewing. I have to do it anyway, so I might as well keep sewing, right? I can just leave the camera on. You don't mind listening to me. 
All right, so we're going to do the E. This is step number four. It's going to do the outline again. I got my Nestle's, that's number 0045, I believe. It's going to do the letter E. Have to do it anyway, right? And then I'm going to make you a video later. See, I can stay up later now because I don't have to, I don't have to get up at so early. <laughs> I can get up at eight o'clock now and I can go to bed at midnight. So that's good. That's kind of my normal hours is midnight to eight. I sleep till eight. Okay. So there's the E. I'm going to go ahead and carefully pull this back. Yep. Put the E on. Okay. This one. So yeah, so you got to get me, see me fix some things. I kind of figured this would happen. It was just, and yeah, the, 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 uh, it was off. I mean, like, you know, just like the other one at the very beginning. So I thought that was very odd. And I, I suppose, I think maybe that measurement might have been wrong. Maybe the measurement was a quarter of an inch off to begin with. So, but it's kind of fun just to leave the camera on sometimes. I have to do it anyway. I have to make this anyway. So I'll keep going for a little while and then we'll say good night and I'll finish it up and I'll take a picture and then I'll do the video of the, there we go. Went cool a little bit. And then I'll do the video of the, um backing for you because the backing was going to be the last class and that was a simple one but i do do it differently i like to do it like the newer pillows that it's in three pieces for the backing instead of two because it's so much easier to get the pillow form in there otherwise it's so hard to whoops i did it again guys you have to watch me i'm going to skip step number four, five so i don't have to do the e again if you do that like i did it it'll just go around the outside edge just no big deal but there we go all right, now we'll do the decorative stitch. I know, I have learned to fix a lot of mistakes. I have I have done a lot of embroidery and I sit and then I try to have, you know, sometimes you just have to fix something. And it has certainly made it easier with some of these advances we've had on our machines over the years. And I just, it's so nice. Like we were able to see then, you know, how things looked here looked like it needed to come this way a little bit, which it did. So we did that, and I think it just looks much better. Okay, so here's the E. The, the pumpkin is really cute, done up. And, but that one is different. It is actually, they have you do most of the applique first, and then they do all the, the like the covering stitches up on it. Looks good. I'm going to be real happy with this one. It's pretty much the same. I had most of the same fabrics, but I had to, I had to mix up a couple of the colors because I didn't have quite enough. I always have to cut two kits out, you know. But this one was a hard one. It was, it, it's, you know... And don't be discouraged if you if something like that happens like it did for me. Go back and use those things on your machines. A lot of you have them. I know a lot of those cameras were on way back at the Quattro. That's 10 years ago. So a lot of people have those cameras and stuff. And it, it is awesome. If you have a problem, you can fix stuff. And the projector really, you know, gave me another whole gamut of, of learning to fix things. So like that little tail on my R here, you'd never know that I, that it didn't cover on that one little side. It looks really good now. So I always get nervous when I do big projects like this because things, you know, can happen. Does the Pathfinder have a camera? It does not. The Pathfinder, is that Teresa? No, it doesn't, Teresa. So 
you only, I would tell you not to use the snap hoops in that machine and use the, um, the little uh, tracing. I'll show it to you on the screen here in a second. You, you can use the little tracing button to make sure that like your T doesn't go down and where you don't want it. This little button right here, if you hit this little button here, there's another little button inside there. And you just hit that again and it'll trace where it's gonna sew. And make sure you do that to make sure, you're, especially the T doesn't go back too far into your wreath. Okay. All right, so let's do the R. R is the gold, I think. Yep, that was my gold. I think that was brass 328 that I used. But yeah, so um, the Pathfinder is an embroidery only. That's the embroidery only, isn't it? That has the 8 by 12 hoop. You're going to have to use the smaller one, the 6 by 10. You'll have to hoop more times. But use that little that little runaround feature. And that's how we did it for years. And the other thing you can do then, if since you don't have a camera, is, is print, if you have some software, print a template of the design and lay it out on there so you know you're getting things lined up, okay? Because that also works quite well. When you don't, because, you know, I've, I've hooped a lot of things without any cameras and I could still do it. And I, that's how I do it is I would print out a template and uh, lay it down on the whole thing so I could tell where everything was laying out. But it's still, so you'd have to use the six by 10, the six by 10 one, not, not this one. This is too big for yours. Yours only has an eight by 12 hoop. It's a good machine though. I have one just like it. I have this sewing embroidery combo with that. All right, so here's my R. Oh, okay. So you don't need, you can get free software, Teresa. Um, I print templates all the time and you can go get Dime has a free software that you can go download called em Embroidery Toolshed. And you can then print your templates off and it's very simple to use. So if you go to inspiredbydime.com, and look for the software downloads, you can get that for free and then you can print your templates. So you don't have to buy any software. It works great. And, and that is a very good way if you don't have a camera to be able to see the whole, like the whole design laid out on your, your, you know, your pillow top. So you know, you got it lined up. Okay. And then you just have to use your little grid to line it up. You'll still mark it. And then you just use your little line to grid line your grid to line it up and then just use that little runaround stitch to make sure. But that's how I, you know, I've, I've been hooping for 20 years and that's how we hooped everything. You know, we didn't have all these fancy cameras when I first got a machine. So it's been cool as the machines have progressed, what all you can do with the machine. And I had to do, you know, I used software a lot and printed templates and you can do a lot. I can still, I can still hoop that way. They were, somebody said that, yeah. Who is it? Rock, Rock Santa. Okay. I can't see, I can't see all the temp, the names very well, but yes, the, the, the cameras and stuff are really game changers. Okay. So there's the R. Get that on there. Okay. Pull my little mat out. And I got my gold in there. Carefully push this back and then we'll get the R on there. Okay. So does everybody feel pretty comfortable? Don't be afraid. It, Like I said, I knew there might be a problem. So that's why I wanted to show you how to fix it. Because I really anticipated this happening. See, I did it again, guys. You got to watch me. I'm going to skip that, that outline. All right. There we go. Okay. And then I'll go up and after class, I'll go ahead and go do my pumpkin and that'll be the next part. The next step to see step number 10 is the line. It's going to do the, the stem first. And I did that in brown. 
and then it's going to start building the whole pumpkin and then it does all the outlines at the end okay or most of them i think the stem might outline first and then the rest of it outlines later all right so there's my r and i'm going to continue on and then later this evening i'll go ahead and finish the video for you for the i'm um, putting it together so you can see how i do the back and then i will meet you here again and then i will be at my home in coralville uh in november so november 13th is when we'll convene again for the next class and we will start candy cane lane let me i'm just go ahead and switch this up while this is sewing i'll show you candy cane lane again and it's up on our website and i'm going to go ahead and get the the classes advertised on the group i haven't done that yet I wasn't sure how things were going to pan out, so I had to, you know. All right, so here's Candy Cane Lane. So this is the one we're going to do. Whoops, second here. Got something in my way. So here's Candy Cane Lane. Okay. So here is Candy Cane Lane. And we'll do this one starting in November. It'll be done in plenty of time to, uh, before Christmas. And then I, but I will put all the classes up on the group probably sometime tomorrow. Um, and there'll be four classes on this one. Okay, so we'll do two in the embroidery, one for the borders and one for putting it together and doing the embellishments. Okay, so this is really fun. And I actually did this one different. I don't know if you can see it. I, I didn't put the lights in this one. This is another one that has lights. Um, I, I don't care for the lights in them because they're kind of ugly when they're not on. You know, when they're on, they're okay. So I actually put crystals on this one. So I'm going to put crystals on mine and you can do, do the lights if you want to. Um, I've got a video about how to put lights on. I did the, Chris, the Halloween pillow. So, um, and where do I find the pattern for the little pad? Okay, who asked me that? Um, Beverly, it's on the group in the post about, um, I put it on the post from last week. It's in the post of last week's video. So you can just click on it and it'll take you right to the, to the, the hoop pad instructions. Okay, so you can make a little hoop pad. They do work really well, all right? And if you have need, need more specific instructions, text me through Facebook or something and I'll send you the link, okay? But it's in the group down a few posts and then um, and then it's it's in the video from last week, okay? All right, so this will, we'll start again. We'll have two weeks off so I can get moved and then you get to see my home again for the first time in a long time. So we will have class the 13th and we'll start Candy Cane Lane and um you can i'll put all the links to like the the um designs i use like the um the quilting designs and the, you can go to our website to get the cd if you don't have it and there's an embellishment kit that you might want um this one had actually quite a lot of embellishments so i'd highly recommend the embellishment kit um unless you have a lot of embellishments around i i bought another one because it was so <laughs> there were so many pieces so i decided I just wanted to have it all in one little bag. So, okay. So I'm I'm sorry I had some problems, but you got me got to watch me fix them. And I'm gonna finish this up and then I'll make you a video to do the backing right afterwards. So I'm gonna eat some supper too while this is sewing. Okay. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. And I will see you in two weeks for Candy Cane Lane. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye.